Are you bored? Bored of casting the same old spells in your tabletop role-playing games? How about if you were able to cast a Wall of Horse, which is a 20-foot-high dome of pure equine power? If that's the case, then Coffee Steak Studios has got the content for you. You can either check them out by going to their Itch.io store or becoming a patron of their patron campaign. There'll be links in the show notes. And now, on with the show, wizard. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host because it's so close to Christmas I can't even talk about it. Now you've got to make sure there's several many things, really important things, you got to make sure you get ready before you get ready for the big day. But on others, you know, you've got to have your mince pies ready. You've got to have, is everything wrapped up? Are your stockings on the wall? You know, have you cleaned out the chimney so that the the fat bearded wonder can come down and give you all your presents? And, you know, that's just Christmas. But what do you do if you're deciding on the big day itself to play yourself some board games? I mean, how do you get yourself organised? What do you do before you play? So to help me with that conundrum, with that task in hand, I have Monique from... Before you play. So, hello. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> I'm very good. How are that, you? That was, some, that was really good uh, word choice there. I had to, I was really holding it back. <laughs> the giggles. <laughs> that was perfect. I was, um, I, I think I've just, um, I've kind of like set up almost immediately large amounts of pressure that you are now the sole responsible person who's going to help decide whether or not people are going to have a good day or a bad day when it oh. comes to playing board games on Christmas oh. Day as well. So um, there's not a, an awful lot of pressure, um, but there is some. So, <laughs> some so some go. is good. Um, Always good. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can handle some pressure. If it's any more than that, then we're, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, then we'll um, go in the red. <laughs> exactly. Um, are you well, first of all? Are things, are things good for you? I think so. You know... Um, I went to a convention last weekend, and so for a while there, when I got back, I wasn't sure if I was well. <laughs> but I, since, as of today, I've decided that yes, I am. How about you? <laughs> I have not been anywhere near a convention, um, but um, I have. I'm always surrounded by various children, and so oh. um, the potential for me getting a cold is always a thing. So, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. It is one of those things. So we're going to just fight through. But no, con crud is real. Um, I guess what happens is when you get several thousand bodies together and, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's there's definitely going to be germs. There's going to be certainly unwashed bits going about. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> um, the potential the potential for germs and stuff is always quite is always quite high. Was that um was that P- PAX Unplugged? Yes. You were at by any chance? Our first yeah. time. Uh-huh. First time at PAX Unplugged. Wow. What was it like? Was it, did it live up to expectations? Did it live up to what you thought it was going to be like? It was quite cold. <laughs> I, I, uh, I live in California, so winter for us right. is like 60 degrees. Yeah. So over there, I, we didn't pack warm enough, so it was quite cold. But the convention itself was really nice. I mean, it was, it definitely, <laughs> I, I want to say it exceeded our expectations by quite a bit. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. But apart from the filthy animals not actually kind of keeping the AC... <laughs> Who's got the AC on here? It's far too cold. Do you not pack a sweater? Of course, you don't own sweaters in California. You don't even have a, a sweater shop. You know, I had to do California. some digging before I packed. I really did. I had to like go into the other room closet to look for a jacket. It was a whole ordeal, but I found one, and apparently it wasn't warm enough. <laughs> it's just like that. But, it's a fine... It's a cardigan. It's a thin cardigan <laughs> sweater it is. but you know it's It'll always a fine. learning experience that's that's yeah. how we grow <laughs> exactly yeah we are ready oh that's good mm-hmm. that's good um were you there were you there a couple of days then uh, to take it because you were traveling you decided well we might as well go the kind of the 
the whole hog then and, and spend a couple of days there. Yeah, I think we were there the longest, I think, out of everyone, it, it seemed like, because <laughs> everybody was leaving on like Sunday and the convention ended uh-huh. on Sunday. So we figured we'd stay till Monday. And I guess not a uh-huh. whole lot of people <laughs> did that. <laughs> so we, we, uh, it's also a little bit of a time zone difference for us. It's, it's only like three hours, but it made, yeah, it, it made a difference at the time because you're staying up late and waking up early. Uh huh. Um, so we took a red eye from here on Wednesday, actually, and arrived there Thursday. So we're there Thursday to Monday, quite some time. That's like a that's like a mini break. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was. Did you did you get um, see when you're going there and you've got you obviously got your media thing going on? Do you are you conscious about kind of do you have days where you decide okay this is the business day this is the day where I'm going to meet with. X, Y, and Z people just to kind of talk to them, you know, maybe about videos that you've done and stuff like that. Do you kind of split up the days or do you just kind of go, oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming. How many people can we speak to? Let's just go and see what we can do. Yeah. Were you quite, were you quite organized? Um, you know, it started out, so this is our first, this is our first a US, United States convention. So this is the first time yeah. that we're meeting with a lot of these people. And so mm-hmm. weeks leading up to the convention, I was that's exactly how I wanted to plan it. I said, okay, we'll do everything <laughs> maybe like on Saturday morning or this and that. And yeah. as you get closer to the date, I think publishers start to realize like, oh, we should start, you know, scheduling more meetings with these other people. And by the time the convention hit, we had a full schedule the whole weekend. <laughs> so it didn't work wow. out that way. Um, I mean, but it was still it was still really great, like being able to meet everybody for the Mm. first time and start establishing relationships with with people and playing games at night. Luckily, I mean, the convention ends at a certain time. And then after that, you pretty much free play. So so we're pretty much gaming at night and meeting with people during Mm -hmm. the day. So you did they close down the hall then and then you have to you get chased out and then you've got to go and game somewhere else. Is that is that kind of how it works? Um, Kind of. So. The, there, the way that Pax Unplugged works, actually, it's just one huge, one big room, basically. Um, unless right. you're in, unless you do like um, role playing games, and then that I believe is like mm-hmm. on a different floor. But specifically mm-hmm. for the board game sub- section, it's one huge room that's divided into, I guess, in half. And so one mm-hmm. half of the room is where all the exhibitors are, and then the other half is sort of like the free play. They have tables set up that have like the new titles from Essen, stuff like that, and tournaments. And so yeah. they partition the wall once the exhibitor room closes. So everybody gets squeezed into the other half if you choose to stay, mm-hmm. and then you can free play there until like midnight or so. So you don't have to leave the facility. Yeah, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Until midnight. And then... I- and then you get to play as play as much as you want. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a lending library, and yeah, it's a, it's a quite quite a big library. So that was nice. Cool. Um, you've been to Essen as well, am I right? You went on to to Essen earlier this year as well. Yes. So actually, Essen. The reason why we don't go to U.S. conventions is because we've been going to Essen even since before we started making um, content. This was our third. Oh, right. Yeah, this is our third year going to Essen this past. Uh-huh. Uh, and the okay. reason why is because it's it's actually more affordable for us to go to Essen than it is to go to Gen Con. It's really strange the way that flights work on this part of the That's country. So, that is so weird. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like uh, we have to drive to San Francisco because they have it's a uh-huh. huge airport and they have deals, I suppose, like all around the world. Yeah. And our, our flights there are really cheap going to like London or... And then once you're in, in Europe, then you can just kind of travel for not that expensive either in between the countries. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it made it made a lot more sense to go to Essen. So it's another, it's just another reason it's like, are you going to Gen Con this year? It's like, no, I'm going to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> actually, that's actually what happened. Uh, this, oh, right. I okay. think maybe last year, because last year we went to, we went to France and we, uh-huh. we wanted to uh-huh. go to Gen Con, but we ended up not for that reason. That sounds absolutely fan. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, so there's a big difference because what I get told, Essen's really quite different from what you would see at kind of other conventions as well. It's very much the kind of everybody's showing their wares and the buyers are going about, and there's a lot more of a bigger kind of commercial aspect to it than there is at you know um, Gen Con and Packs Unplugged and things like that as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of 
fun that way. How, did you actually did you manage to get lots of games played at PAX then? I mean, did you? Yes, barring barring the meetings during the day, because the me- mm-hmm. the meetings kind of um, took time where you know we wouldn't be able to get like a longer game in because yeah. we had to like leave for a meeting. But um, barring those, yes, we were able to play quite a few. Especially on the last day when everybody left, suddenly <laughs> all the the games were just like open. Like we were going uh, back and forth from all the the new titles and stuff. So it was really fun. So you're able to kind of go and everybody's going. I never got a chance to play the latest hotness, and you're just like going, "Yeah, I did. I stayed Monday." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got all the games. In fact, in fact, they had so many spare copies left. They just gave me like you know four or five spare copies as well. So I'm not only playing it when I'm there. I'm also going to be playing it all this week, <laughs> and we're going to play. We're going to play the separate copies too. And I think it'll be it'll be really good fun. Exactly. Um, so stay till Monday. And <laughs> In terms of a haul in, did you, do you, did you, did you go, are you controlled with getting a haul? Do you say, okay, I'm going to pick up, I know I'm going to get this game, this game, and this game for content purposes, but do you also set a budget to say, well, actually, we know these, um, we know these companies are going to be here, so let's grab us some of this, 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 and that? You know, we're not, um, we're not really big on, just we're not i don't know how to explain it actually we we don't do a whole lot of purchasing um of board games it's the strangest thing we're very calculated yeah. when it comes to to adding things to our collection mainly because we mm-hmm. have so many games on our shelves that we haven't played so yeah. we don't I, I try to stay away <clears throat> from doing the research because i know that i'm going to start creating a list you know if i look up the games ahead of time so we kind of yeah. just get there see how much space we have left and then see if there's anything you know that's kind of worth it. So we don't we don't really have a plan of action in terms of the haul. Yeah. How did do you hold to that plan of action then? I mean, that's the, how did you just get there and say, "Give me all the games, <laughs> all of the." I I don't even like that game over there, but just give me. I'll just take that one as well. You know, I'll just you know give me that copy of Terraforming Mars. I know it's terrible, <laughs> and it should be burned. But you know, I'll just take it anyway. I'm going to take <laughs> no. it outside, and then I'm going to I'm going to eat I'm going to eat pizza on it, and then I'm going to throw it throw it away. That's what I'm going to no, do. Well, we're um, we're very my, calculated. We we try to uh, yeah. well actually at Essen it's different at Essen because they have a lot of games that that don't come to mm. the U- U.S. market or come very late. Then we do yeah. try to we do have a list, <laughs> but but we also have to be like very mindful of the amount of space in our luggage, um, and we also try to play the game before we decide to pick it up. But a lot of the games, all right. Like, yeah, that's like a big rule for the both of us. My my husband and I, we we really tried to test, mm. play test the game, and really have a conversation about it before we pick it up. Um, but like a lot of the Japanese games or the Taiwanese games, we'll just buy. <laughs> They're hard. Those are impossible to find. Are they? Yeah, I mean, are they really? I mean, are they, are they really really difficult to find then? I yes, mean, I don't see many on the market. No, you. I mean, you pretty much have to import them if you don't buy them when they're in front of you, <laughs> when you're when wow. you're at the convention. So I think that's why those sell out so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, and they're very unique. Um, I mean, are they? I mean, are, are they? I mean, how 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 do they go under different? I mean, is it different styles as well? Is there a specific type of genre that you would find them under? I mean, are you looking because a lot of German games you would say well they're more kind of euros kind of ish they're generally a little bit kind of like heavier whereas right. there are, is there just again multiple many kind of different genres that you can get within the kind of the japanese kind of board game kind of market um i think that the from my experience a lot of the japanese mm-hmm. and um, taiwanese games that i've played have been like of the quicker quicker gameplay like you can mm-hmm. just kind of sit around and, and play them and they they're usually no longer than an hour or so just from my experience right. so but they they do range in like the different mechanics that they that they use mm-hmm. so there's a lot of there's quite a lot of variety in terms of that but um typically they'll be faster games do you have a do you have a mixture of do you have a quite a big collection yourself then of kind of japanese and taiwanese games no not at all <laughs> we probably have less than 10 <laughs> really? yeah and Mainly because we, we always tell ourselves we're going to pick up this, this, and this, and then we get there and yeah. we sold out. We didn't pre-order it. We're really, really bad at wow. planning on picking those up. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the list of all the games we're going to cover, yeah. and here's the list of all the games that we didn't actually manage to pick up at the same time. Right. And you could just basically 
cover one with the other and they kind of exactly match. Yeah, yeah I kind of do that a lot. I kind of get that and I'm kind of, I don't know. Um, there's a, the, the whole fear of the new thing, but right. there's just games that I, that like three years down the line, I'm still... I still don't have in my collection <laughs> and everybody's kind of like going oh yeah you know Azul 3's coming out oh. what do you think of the other ones it's like I've never I've never played I've never played Azul you, you um, haven't played I've Azul never played, 1? I've n- never oh I've not you know I've never ever I've never ever played it yeah um, I met the designer I met the designer of Azul um, we were at um, we were um and there was, we were at a donut stand and there was a really nice donut <laughs> and I went to reach for it and they went to reach for it at the same time. Oh. And we had, we had a really big argument <laughs> and then I looked, I looked them in the eye and I said, I will never, as long as I live, <laughs> look at your, st- look at your, st- your stinking little tile game. Oh, no. And then I just, and then I just left. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not true. Over but, a donut. Know, it, makes, it, it just makes it makes a good story. I'm assuming he um, won the donut. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. You know, I still, um, it's still, still a sore topic. <laughs> how did you, um, how did you get into the to the hobby? You mentioned you mentioned you and your husband are kind of playing him. So, were you were you both? Was it something you ended up kind of started doing as kind of like a as a couple? As in, you know, we we could watch something on the TV or. Let's play a board game together because it's a lot more fun. Mm -hmm, Yeah. So we've, I mean, it's always kind of like the typical story that both of us have been playing separately since we were kids, right? Just like the Mm -hmm. stuff that you get at Target. (laughs) But um, Mm -hmm. I, I was actually introduced to board games or, you know, modern board gaming when I was in high school. My friend had a copy of Bang, the card game for some reason. Wow. Yeah. I have no idea, actually. He's my best friend and I have no idea where... He got it. But one day he just brought it around and we couldn't stop playing it. Like we would schedule days that our group of friends to to gather f- around this game, <laughs> this card game that I don't really see many people playing anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah. and it was ruthless. I don't know if you've ever played Bang that, you know, you could really you can really go after someone in that game. So and then we played a game called Killer Bunnies. Have you heard of that before? The name Killer Bunnies rings a bell. It's a really random <laughs> game. <I> can- <laughs> But it's we kind of, loved it. <laughs> I've maybe dreamed about it, but I can't, you know. So oh, it was like a cult of game. Went, Killer bunnies. <laughs> it's actually called Killer Bunnies <laughs> and the Quest for the Magical Carrot. But um, we were obsessed with that game. And then after that, we didn't really game until um, I met my husband. And I, yeah. I went, uh, I, moved, I met my husband because I moved down to Southern California. I'm from San Francisco. And I moved down here right. for my master's program. And I was finishing, I was, it was like the year that I was graduating. And I was really stressed out and I needed a hobby outside of music. Yeah. And something yeah. that I could meet people and have friends in Southern California, you know? So um, yeah. I went, I, we have this uh, thing here called meetup.com. And we, I found a board gaming group that way. So I was the first one to actually find um, other people in the hobby. And then Mm -hmm. my husband followed suit. He kind of was interested in what I was doing. And then he he got sucked in, like, really hard. (laughs) He fell into the hole. What was it you did your master's in? What is it you you studied? Oh, I'm a nurse practitioner. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I I don't think they have nurse practitioners all over the world, so I'm not sure. Do they have them where you're at? Do you know? Um, I th- kind of, kind of. There's a lot of kind of, kind of. Yeah, yeah. That's the the sense that I get. It's like a. It's basically a. I'm a nurse who went and got a, a master's degree, and now I can practice medicine. It's the craziest thing. <laughs> it's weird. That that yeah. So it's kind of like you're as you're you're as you're kind of as good as a doctor, but you don't have to work on your golf swing. Yes. Um, <laughs> kind of guessing and i'm guessing that you also don't get as much money as they get as well correct and we um, and for the most is, part is, we do what they say in a lot of situations but it's still like a pretty good job <laughs> so have you are you is that what you do as a job just now then is that you is that your your kind of your job, job? Mm-hmm. yeah that's what wow. i do that's what i do and i'm not doing anything else <laughs> Cool. So Which is pretty much every day. <laughs> so you're playing you're playing games with your husband, you're going on meetup.com, you're going to games groups, 
your husband then kind of comes along. Um, is this, I mean, have you, did you find yourselves kind of gradually kind of like growing into kind of like, we're just building a collection here. It's kind of getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Did you ever get into the situation where you're buying gifts for each other on, say, Valentine's Day and you bought exactly the same board game as each oh. other? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um Oh my, I didn't even think about that. That would be hilarious. No, that's never happened. Uh, and I think the main reason why is because our taste in board games is very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, he, we, we like, we both tend to like the same weight in a game. Like yeah. we're both uh, pretty heavy Euro gamers. Yeah. Uh, but he likes them as dry as you can get them. Like if it's yeah. like, if it comes like in a brown box with just like, <laughs> like, artwork from the 1800s that's yeah. like his jam he he will put that at the top of his list and i'm just not as keen on that type of game so whenever i have surprised him with a game in the past it's one of those <laughs> something that falls in that category <laughs> so it's the kind of ga- kind of game you could actually play with like buttons and cubes and stuff like yes, that and it's like that is, is, that is kind of like as thematic as <laughs> it you just buy them correct just i've bought you what have you bought me for christmas i bought you a rainbow of various different colored cubes and you just sit there and you just watch you know it's like it was either that honey or it was it was new sandals uh, you know you know that's brilliant i think i'm gonna add that to his uh, <laughs> you've got time you might christmas have time you have to go and get him a bag of cubes just get him a bag of cubes just random ones and he says because and he's like why because there is going to come a point where you are going to be in the kitchen making yourself like a coffee or something like that, and you know, <laughs> uh, you know, and a pancake, and all you're going to hear from the other room is, "Honey, have you seen my blue and orange cubes?" Because we were playing, because <laughs> we were playing in Contina, you know, the one that's the really dry Euro game that I love, and I swear I can't find the cubes anymore. And rather than him being despondent and sad, you're going to say. Honey, go to the cube bag. <laughs> the cube bag. <laughs> and I've got three shades of orange <laughs> that you can kind of that you can kind of that you can kind of pick from. Um, that's perfect. I think a, a cube bag and a history book is what's going to be under the tree for him this year. And he can make his own game. <laughs> there you go. That's what you're driving him for. Now, you know. Now we're thinking. Well, it's either that. It's either that, or he gets in. Either that, or as he gets older, he buys a shell of a boat. And he oh. ends up, he ends up like and, he ends up like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption. Just where are you go now? I'm just making a boat, and it's like, honey, we live in an apartment. We <laughs> there's no space for the boat. Um, but anyway, um, has has your taste has your taste changed? I mean, do you, as somebody who creates content about board games, do you mm-hmm. do you have to be a bit more open about what your tastes could potentially be? I think so. I think that, well, I think that it depends on your goals, Mm. right? If your goals are to appeal to the masses, then yes, definitely. You have to try everything. You have to try everything and you have to feature as as much of a variety of genres Mm -hmm. as you can. But if, if you're... If you go and start um, making content thinking, no, I'm just going to appeal to people who like heavy Euro games, then yeah. so be it. <laughs> go for it. But you have to understand that you're only going to be attracting a, um, a specific part of an already niche market. Uh-huh. That uh-huh. makes sense? Yeah. So it really just depends on what your your goals and your values are. But for us specifically, mm-hmm. um, we kind of went into it thinking like we're just going to play all these euros and find all the people who are into euros all over the world and then we it didn't work out that way so now we are definitely expanding our our breadth i suppose um what what's what's your kind of your ideal game i mean you you mentioned obviously your husband likes the dry stuff so are you Mm -hmm. are you more of a kind of like give me a viticulture give me a bit of feast of odin give me a bit of everdell kind of thing you know give me that oh kind. yeah i'm my favorite <laughs> designer is a uh, vital lacerda yes have you ever have you played yes yeah okay so i love his games because they are very heavy 
Uh, they're heavy euros, all of them, but they have a theme. They each have like a personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though, you know, obviously the theme isn't going to apply to every single mechanic that's in the game, like some stuff is just there because it's just there. But uh, the personality still speaks to me, you know? So I love, I love all of his games. So what's your, what would you say your favorite one is? Ah. <sighs> It, it kind of goes back and forth between Kanban and Lisboa. Kanban was the very first one that I'd played by hand mm -hmm. that really yeah. hooked, hooked me. Um, and I would, mm, I would probably still say Kanban, but Lisboa is very good. Very, very good. Because I had um, um, Eno Two was on and he did a lot of the art for Lisboa. Um, yes, that's right. You know, it's a lovely, beautiful kind of... Um, light blue or well, different various just different colors and it's a striking type of board I and mean, when people walk past it you're kind of like oh I, I need to stop and kind of like appreciate you know appreciate what's kind of going on in this kind of board so are mm -hmm. you would you say you're quite analytical then are you a type of person who look at i guess based on your job if <laughs> somebody comes in and goes <laughs> yeah my my arm is um my arm's not feeling well and it's like well i think oh, it gosh. could be athlete's foot um <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know are you quite exactly do you like kind of like plan ahead are you quite strategical and and kind of get analytical when you're kind of like playing the game what when playing games oh yeah yeah definitely yeah, and yeah. that's that's pretty much how we i mean that's part of the reason why we started making um content at all was because we would play these big games mm -hmm. when we would finish them and have these like long discussions over them and how you know what we thought about the mechanics in the game and how we were able to further our strategy, et cetera. So, oh yeah, every every game is like that. It's really intense. <laughs> I don't know if it's the most ideal way to play a game, but <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember what kicked it off? What made you kind of make the decision to to kind of start creating content? Then, yeah. So I've actually been thinking about it for the past two years. It just took a long time to get started. I had started an Instagram in like 2017, and then. Yeah. The thing about making content is you have to be consistent. And so that's where a lot of people kind of fall off is because it, it's a grind. It's like a daily, weekly grind forever. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, it's, I, I had to stop the Instagram because we were getting married that year. Um, and then earlier this year, I've, I don't know if you've ever seen a, a channel called Show Me How to Win. It's a YouTube channel from my, my, by my friend Jackie. She features uh, female gamers and... And we play a game and we break mm. down the strategy, four different strategies, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and she had invited me on for an episode. And she, she like hires a camera crew. It's a really, it's a really thorough experience. So after that, I was very inspired. I said, oh my gosh, I think I want to do, I want to do this. Kind of on the side. And is that when you started off first with Canelli? Did you sit down and say, okay, let's, what are we going to cover kind of first of all? Did you try and plan it out first of all? Did you just say, right, I'm going to pick you off the shelf and let's just, where's my phone? And let's just kind of start kind of filming something. Yeah, actually, uh, it started off, you know, a lot of people kind of give, gave me advice at the time before I even started the, the channel saying, like, you, you, at this point, it would be ideal for you to find something that would set you apart from all other content creators, right? Because the, the scene is a little bit more saturated than it used to be. Yeah. And so I really, really love teaching board games. I probably love teaching board games more than I love playing them. And that's something that I had been doing at the local conventions for maybe three or four years now. Yeah. And so... I, I, it started off as me saying that I wanted to just do board game tutorials. So I have a mm -hmm. few tutorials up on there right now, but that's what, I, that, that's what I wanted the channel to be only, like just board game tutorials that show people how to play the game and also how to teach the game. So I, I kind of started, um, started off doing that, but it takes so long. <laughs> those videos, those videos take quite a bit of time to produce. So... We kind of, uh, after that, we kind of ventured into the playthrough space, which is kind of where we're at right now. But, you know, content is funny that way. Our tutorials are just, um, they're the worst. They're just a minefield. <laughs> Anybody that does tutorials, I mean, Paul Grogan, you know, gaming rules, and he's like, I'm going to do a tutorial. And I'm just like, I, I have so much respect for somebody that sits down and says, okay, let's show you how to do this, 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 and this. Because there's two things, and obviously, you know, um, 
there's two things to that, and Rod, you know, Rodney Smith as well, is that mm-hmm. I know I would get something wrong. Right. I know I know that I would be argumentative with somebody who was telling me I got it wrong, even if they showed <laughs> me the relevant, took photographs and showed me the relevant section in the rule book, I would still right. be like, I'm not, no, I can't, um, you know, I am, um, I, I, what, the way I played it, 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 the way I read it, it read the way I was teaching it, but... Right. Do you, does it need a script? Is it more kind of scripted then? Um, specifically, the ones that, that we do are always scripted. Yeah. And the main reason why is because um, I don't actually show my face in them. So in order for me to do that without having to re-record so many times, I just decided to write a script and record the audio first. Um not only that, but also so I can kind of go through the script and make sure none of the rules are wrong, which doesn't yeah. always, you know, work out. But yeah, that's mainly why. So so because of that, it takes a lot longer. I have to sit and write the script. That's the first mm-hmm. thing that I do. Mm-hmm. You know, so it can be quite involved. And mm-hmm. does it make it easier to kind of go back and edit stuff in if you're just having to kind of add in? You know, if you if you go through it and go. Oh, I- should have said that or that doesn't sound right I'll need to go back and edit I think it's relatively easy to go back in and rejig the audio and then just make sure it's kind of matching up to kind of the video kind of afterwards oh yeah yeah as long as it hasn't been published you know anything can be fixed uh, fairly quickly once it's published on YouTube that's kind of ah, that's where it gets tricky because I've I've posted um, some tutorial videos in the past that have had like an error Mm -hmm. (laughs) a rule error because it's just inevitable so um, it used to be in the olden days of YouTube where you could actually uh, go in and like make a little pop-up bubble. So by the time the person gets to that part in the video, it'll show the correction. Yeah, yeah. But they kind of nix that. And so that kind of makes it difficult um, after it's already been published. You can end up like kind of almost issuing a retraction. To say we'd, yeah. like, we'd like to apologize, but you should have actually been. Or um, as I think <laughs> Rado does it... Um, talks about putting on kind of like the Klingon subtitles so yes. that you can pick up on kind of any potential errors that he's he's made as he's kind of been as he's been kind of kind of playing kind of playing it through um right right you do you do kind of like videos where you you're saying okay this is how to teach people who already know the game how to teach people how to teach other people <laughs> how to play the game and it's a little bit inceptiony. I was expecting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a tutorial. It's a teacher. Tu- <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a tutorial within a tutorial. Did you, did you notice that yourself as you were playing? That you know, folk were saying, "Right, I'm going to teach you how to play this game," and it just ended up being like a rules fest again. You ended up, oh, okay, just give me a second. I I know how to play this game, but. I just need to go and check this stupid little rule that I can kind of kind of forgotten. Is that is that kind of one of the reasons why you did it? Uh, actually, the main reason why why uh, I did that is because I've been prone to a lot of um, hmm, a lot of teaches in the past that maybe were not as effective. Yeah. So some people, I, I feel like teaching teaching in general is kind of something that you just you naturally can do, or maybe you naturally can't as much or you just really don't know like what the structure should be when teaching a game or teaching math or whatever it is that you're teaching and so there are a lot of people who kind of struggle with it and I have some friends actually who it it, it gives them anxiety knowing that they have to teach a game to a group like they have they prepare all night and they're like really they get really nervous so um, and I have quite a few friends that are like that so it kind of came from that just me wanting to help people who are kind of in that boat you know? Oh no, yeah, totally. I mean, there's yeah. there is nothing worse than, especially if, um, and you'll probably be in the same boat as I am. I am in which I am in, which is, you know, I'm obviously I can't guess construct a sentence at all at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic on a podcast. But um, <laughs> you're in you're occasionally in the situation where you're playing a game so that you can either get an idea of how that game plays or have the ability to create the content to play that game. You know, especially if you're looking at a game like, say, Tapestry, which I noticed right. you've got like a video, you've got a video on there. But one of the reasons to put a video out there, because it's got your video on Tapestry, has got 
a huge number, of, well, a reasonably huge number of views. It's got about five thousand views on there because it's a, it was obviously oh, yeah. a, it's a bit of a, a kind of an internet darling at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I guess my point is kind of like, do you ever feel like? <laughs> It's like I feel like sometimes I'm like I'm I'm learning to play this game to learn to play the game, as opposed to doing what the game was all about in the first type place, which is have a really good time, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it does become quite uh, it does become quite businessy. So we've actually decided um, recently to in order to combat that we mm-hmm. scheduled a one day a week, which is kind of just between just for the two of us, my husband yeah. and I, where we play through. Just like all the games that we wanted to play that week, mm-hmm. and we do some of it is for content, some of it is is for not content. So that kind of helps us bring it back to why we do this in the first place, right? Yeah, <laughs> to have exactly. fun and, and yeah. play the game. Yeah, yeah. Or else it does become a little bit too businessy. It's weird, very strange. It's just I don't. Um, yeah, I've, I've spoken to a couple of people about that. It's kind of like getting back to kind of playing games for the kind of the enjoyment kind of thing. And... Yeah, right. And uh, like, I mean, speaking on that as well, I've I've noticed that as as we get more and more into content creating and meeting other people who create content, everybody else is kind of telling us the same thing. Where when they started making content, they started playing less games. So, and that I find that to be very sad. So we're really trying to make it a point to not get to that. We really want to just make sure that we're focusing on why we're doing this, right? Because it's easy to get kind of lost in in trying to put out your content and making more, that kind of thing. Yeah, especially if it's like a time scale. I mean, we kind of have been doing more and more kind of um, Kickstarter kind of preview stuff and mm-hmm. just general chats. And occasionally, if I'm if I'm up to it or feel interested in doing it, I'll do like a quick, a kind of a quick video. But I don't promise doing videos because my my setup is um is atrocious um uh, you know it's not very <laughs> good at bad. all it's just yeah it's not it's not good um and it's as organized as it's as organized as my show notes are for a podcast as in there isn't any um but yeah i it's tough yeah um it <laughs> yeah video so, is yeah. quite a beast you know Ugh, I just, it's, it's I... not it's i mean even if you do have the equipment for it it's just People go to school for that kind of thing, you know. Like they dedicate their lives to figuring out how to how to how to make video well. So I it's know, tough. I know, and you can still tell. I mean, you can you can tell um, on people that have obviously had some kind of training, or they're at the point where they're doing stuff just ridiculously well in terms of kind of like videos that their stuff kind of like kind of stands out. I know that you know, right? Um, you know, bless Rado for all the stuff that he does, but his actual, you know, his tech, his gaming capability is amazing and he's really good at helping me to decide whether or not I actually want to play a game. But the technical mm-hmm. filming side of things isn't kind of, it's not, I mean, <laughs> it's better than mine. It's you know, his own but style. It's, yeah, it's, it's his own. Yeah, yeah. It's his, that's yeah, very, it, dip- it really that's very diplomatic. It's kind of like... <laughs> But then you get someone like, you know, obviously like yourself or, um, you know, Luke Hector um, or or you go to the other extreme where, you know, you get somebody like, um, like say, Paula Deming and their stuff is like, you're just like looking at it and going, this is like you have been doing this with a film crew and yeah. it's very kind of, it's very, very kind of, kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> I don't I mean that. that. I, need to wa- I need to watch that. I'll just, <laughs> she's going to kill me. <laughs> Um, I met know. her for the first time at Pax Unplugged, and she is delightful. Of course she is. <laughs> yeah. Of course Absolutely. she is. <laughs> you know, I was expecting you know, hear you. Don't talk to me. There's a potentiality I'm gonna um, I'm gonna meet her next year um, at oh, Aircon, that's great. and I am absolutely terrified of of that <laughs> potential situation. Why? Um, I just you know it's like I don't know. I'm kind of veering <laughs> between kind of being quite cheeky and kind of kind of, kind of being quite kind of um, complimentary, but normally it's, you know, somebody's <laughs> going to give me a slap um, oh, so no. at some point. I don't know if it's going to be there or somebody else. We'll just have to, we'll just have to kind of, kind of see. Play it by um, <laughs> Play, play it sure by you cover. Film it. <laughs> I'm not going to do, give you the pleasure of seeing me getting slapped <laughs> live on, on video. That's just not going to oh, no. happen. Um, 
do you with you kind of you'll be getting noticed and i'm guessing that you're going to be getting contacted by publishers to say would you consider looking at this game or this game um hmm. at the same time are you can do you end up kind of balancing out kind of playing games in order that you know like say tapestry for instance that was a popular mm -hmm game of the now did you make the decision to say well let's get some tapestry content out there in order to help kind of boost the channel yeah uh, yeah i mean there was definitely a little bit of that for sure I, you mm -hmm. know we jamie stegmeyer he's been hit stonemeyer games has been really doing well <laughs> this past year and um I'm, I'm actually quite a big fan of his anyway so it was just kind of double fold like, uh, we were interested in the game already. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a member of his, uh, he has like a, like a group, the champion. If like, if you support their content, it's kind of like exclusive, like, yeah. you get things earlier, that kind of thing. So I was a champion member. And so I, I talked to my husband and I said, well, why don't we try to get this early? Um, there's yeah. a lot of buzz about it. We are interested in the game anyway. So let's order it early and try to put it out as quickly as we can. So we'll, right when we got it in, we, we said, okay, we're going to set aside this day. <laughs> we're going to mm. play this game and we're going to figure out, um, you know, how it plays. We read the rule book before the game came so that we were just like ready to play it. And then we tried to get it out as quickly as possible. So, as yeah, a, so definitely. Do you go back and play games after you've played them then? I mean, are there games that you've played that you went, thank goodness I've got through this because this was an absolute nightmare. I hated it. <laughs> yeah. yeah we i mean yes there are some games that we'll that we'll play through and we'll think yeah that was okay but i don't <laughs> think i need to play it again <laughs> you know what i mean yes. um i don't think we've covered anything that we've hated so far so far so everything has just either been just okay or fantastic and if, if it is fantastic we actually have a whole shelf in our house dedicated to what we call as forever games and those are games that we know we're not getting rid of Wow. Any time in the next five years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll try to replay yeah. those. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. um, the only, it's really surprising, but a lot of the games that I kind of went, hmm, that's okay, um, are quite a few Kickstarter ones that have come in. I've mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like, they were like really, really kind of like were, um, you know, hyped in and everyone's like, yeah, I back this and yeah, I'm the 57,000th <laughs> backer. And then they get it and you see the ones that aren't doing, that have obviously hit there and people are just like, oh, this, I'm not wanting to play this because it's too late or uh, I'm not excited on it or I've played it and it's not as good as it as it could be. Um, right. Yeah. And it's kind of, I see quite, yeah, I kind of... Kickstarter I mean, is tough. Kickstarter is, is really tough that way. I think it's difficult to maintain excitement it's almost like um, Kickstarter's kind of like going to see the new Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that you buy your ticket, you stand outside the cinema, you get the popcorn, you sit down just before the film about to start, and then the lights come up. <laughs> And they say, <laughs> and then they say, okay. Um, in about eight months' time, we'll send you the download code for the for the kind of the Blu-ray version. And you're just like going, oh gosh, and you're like going, oh, right, okay, yeah, uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but we've I'm gathered here with this fabulous all these other people that were surrounded me. They're all sitting in the cinema, and we were all talking about how excited we were about seeing this. And now you're telling me I've, I'm yeah. not going to see it for eight months, and then you know. Um, so that's kind of like, but you know, it is. Right. It kind of it the kind excitement of, it, becomes stale, almost, right? It almost yeah. expires. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so, there's a lot. There's a lot of games out there that rely on the hype to kind of get them going, and then some mm -hmm. of them do really, really well. And then some of them, when they arrive on Kickstarter, they just kind of like <laughs> they kind of unfortunately kind of like they just disappear forever. But then you do get some games that kind of like they come back when the Kickstarters fulfill. And then they they climb up the BGG rankings again, and everybody right. kind of gets like really, kind of really really excited. Especially, it's interesting to see kind of like the bigger, the really bigger games. Like I think um, games like Tainted Grail has mm -hmm. just arrived. So I've seen a lot of people kind of playing that kind of game, and it's kind of shot up the charts. But there's other games that are arriving as well, which just you know that's it. They're not they're not kind of going 
kind of kind of anywhere anywhere right. at all. Yeah, yeah. Kickstarter's um, tough. Yeah, I think for all parties, even for the the publishers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a whole psychology, you know. Do you get offered kind of Kickstarters? Do you get people kind of saying, you know, asking to do kind of videos and help kind of get you, yeah, you to we, get them kind of exposure and stuff? We do. Kickstarter Kickstarter is a really tough one. It's mm. kind of a tough topic, actually, just because they, you know, they range in, they range so highly in, in quality and, mm-hmm. you know, so it's really difficult. And a lot of them... They don't maybe don't have a budget or they have very specific needs and creating a video for any kind of any kind of content is very time consuming. So we have to be very careful about which uh, projects to accept. Um, When we first started out, the advice was take as many Kickstarters as you can. So we 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 took a few and we started hating (laughs) making content for that reason because it's it's quite demanding you know they they need things by a certain date you know a lot of times the um the projects aren't aren't full versions like they have they're like prototypes so they're missing the rules change i think that might be one of the more difficult things is sometimes they'll give you the rules and then you'll make the content the rules will change so it's kickstarter is just kind of a big um it's it's pretty difficult (laughs) It no, I see, no, but I see. It, I kind of see it all the, I kind of see it all the time, and it's quite. Um, and it's also <laughs> there's nothing worse than if you don't get on with the game, and you kind of, ah, I'm kind of like I know that you know it's kind of like it's the worst case because it's like, yeah, I've spent all this time kind of creating this stuff, and I know that I'm going to come across like, um, you know, unkind. <laughs> Because right. I'm saying these particular things don't work, which means there's a potentiality they're never ever going to link the content in the campaign, right. kind of anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of like I've spent my time playing the game and I didn't like it, and now right. you're never going to use my my kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> how long does it take you to do a video? Because people are like, you know, that you do like stuff which is fairly, um, you know, it's fairly involved. So, mm-hmm. I mean, are you talking, is it a couple of days for you to put something together then? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, always. Um, it really depends on what it is. If it's a playthrough, obviously, you know, filming the actual playthrough, these games will take us an hour and a half to two hours to just play the game and film it. And then getting all of the footage together in one place and then actually doing the editing of the video will be... I can probably put it out the next day if I worked on it, you know, yeah. for so many hours the next day. Um, but if, if in terms of the tutorial series videos, those take, I, I will I give myself a week for those for sure. And it also depends on how long the game is. Yeah. I mean, um, how is it difficult and has it been quite difficult to teach your dog the technical skills required <laughs> to edit the videos as well. <laughs> no, he teaches me. <laughs> he, I, he's the one with I, the degree. <laughs> well, he's got, he's got what, you, what kind of dog have you got? Well, I've got the one over there who's a sous chef. <laughs> but this little this little one, he has a little whittle now and again in the corner. But he's actually yeah. he's he's done three years at film film school. And I was he's like, quite a director. He's like, <laughs> you put your hand up, and then I will high five you. Okay, that is so cool. I've seen that. <laughs> are you? Are I mean, um, I don't know if you've seen that. Um, Fk and Elaine, at no pun included, they've got they've got their little oh, yeah. dog now as well. And I'm just saying, is this They're where great. we're heading now? Is this where we're heading? Do we need to have kind of? Because I got a, I've brought a bunny into the video, and I'm quite. I mean, if this is uh, where, if this is where we're going, then this is kind of, um, this is kind of how it's how it's kind of going. Um, I mean, I think so. I <laughs> I'm think, not complaining. <laughs> I want somebody to bring in a tiger. Oh. <laughs> That's just, oh wow. <laughs> I just you know I'd see them. I would be very afraid for that just, person. You imagine how nervous they would be. Kind of like, I'm going to just gingerly move this meeple up the track <laughs> <laughs> while the tiger's just just kind of gently, gently kind of, kind of looking. Um, you have to let the tiger win every time. <laughs> if, well, most, I, I, I let them, I didn't let them win this one time and as you can see I've not got that finger left. Um, <laughs> is there attempt to, is it 
attempting to change the format and try new things. I mean, how do you keep yourself kind of motivated and going? Because there's always kind of, and it happened to it happened to me back in kind of August September, where um, mm-hmm. iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever you know other podcast thingies are available, but that they changed their algorithm and we like totally crashed out the Apple charts like I think everybody else did and the download figures kind of took a drop of about 20% and I just went that's it my everything is over we have to stop everything but do you do you how do you keep kind of keep yourself motivated if do you set yourself goals to say okay well if we get 10 more videos on, if we get 10 more views on a video then that's great or if we get 100 more views on a video then that's kind of brilliant and and, and, and mm-hmm. how do you go about kind of managing expectations and setting goals for yourself right that's that's a great question because that's actually something that we've been battling through for the past few months mm-hmm. well i mean we've, we've only been doing it for a few months but pretty much throughout the whole thing that's that's a question that we've been asking ourselves and i think the answer now is that we have stopped caring about the numbers because if we focus way too much on how many views we're getting and yeah. how, you know, this and that, then it's just going to be way too stressful. So the number one thing is we're not actually in love with or not. We're not actually um, tied down to any specific thing that we do. So we used to do unboxings and we've recently ditched yeah. them because yeah. they they were really kind of a, a pain <laughs> for me to do. And they're they're just not they were just were not worth it after a while. So. For us, if we need to make a content switch, we're not afraid to do it. Because our, our concept is if we're doing this and we love it and we continue to improve in the ways that we feel that we need to improve, then the people will come watch it if, they, if they'd like to, as long as we're doing the marketing in the proper ways and trying to get the video out to people who we might, might think might be interested, then people will come is mm-hmm. kind of our philosophy on it. Mm-hmm. So we, we try not to get hung up on the numbers. It's the biggest thing. Yeah, and I think that that is you end up kind of second guessing, and then you end up in a. I've seen a lot of content creators, and as I say, we kind of. I understood for us it was the algorithm that was at fault because I spoke to a couple mm-hmm. of people, and I just went, and they went, "Well, yeah, we're all the same." And then within like, kind of like the couple of months, we're like hitting within well within kind of like the top hundreds on kind of for games on on Apple Podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'm like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, good that's at this. great. I'm amazing. <laughs> How amazing am I? Cut back to me going September, going, I hate everything. Podcasts <laughs> are rubbish. Board games are rubbish. I hate it. <laughs> and um but yeah, I see people that kinda like you end up kinda like second kinda second guessing yourself. Right. Are you with you kinda having the collection, do you ever kinda like look at the shelves and just go, I tell you what, why let's just do something on everything that we've kind of got and forget about chasing the new stuff which everybody's doing and let's just run our own little series and let Mm -hmm. the audience kind of find us kind of thing yeah that's funny that you mentioned that because we're actually in the middle of a big um transitionary period uh, for Mm -hmm. our channel where we have um, new equipment and we've upgraded some some stuff that we're going to start using but in in addition our content is going to be maybe shifting a little bit we have a ton of games that we have unplayed on our shelves. And that's like, it's funny you mentioned, because that's exactly what we're going to do for the next yeah. year. We're going to try to play all of them. And we're going to call it like the Shelf of Opportunity or something series where we're going to just play through all these games that we haven't played that are on our shelf and try to make a decision on them and kind of make videos on that. So people can see playthroughs of older games because I'm a big fan of of older games. I'm not 100% on, you know, the cult of the new because older games are still really, really great. And so that's, that's part of the goal is to try to feature some of those. Yeah. Yeah. And if I had like, if I had like, say, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I kind of like, I've got a game on the table, which has been sitting on the shelf for like six months and I finally got it and went, wow, I wish I played this sooner. I would have at yeah. least about maybe twenty six and a half dollars. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> I I reckon. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Uh, you know, we have and, gold sitting on our shelves. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, well, I just yeah. I I kind of you know I, I I must admit I was. I'm kind of having a little. I'm I'm not having a break from Kickstarter, but I'm not looking as much just because of. 
how much things cost and and you know um Mm-hmm. And also at the same time, and kind of like saying, well, as you as you said yourself, I've got there's gold in them shelves, mm-hmm, and I've yeah. not touched, you know, and I've or there's, or there's nothing worse than saying, right, okay, I'm going to buy this because it's an actual bargain, and you get it, and right. then it kind of like sits here for six months, and it's like, well, I could probably use that for the electricity bill, so we weren't <laughs> sitting in the dark. You there know, you I go. Could have used, I could have used that uh, instead. Um, yeah. What kind of games, okay, with you going back to your shelf of wonder, glory, and fun. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of acronym you could make up for that. I don't know. Um, or abbreviation <laughs> or something. Um, cave of Wonders. <laughs> the Cave the cave of Wonders. The, <laughs> the shelf of, I don't know, you've got to watch out because that could just end up a whole different type of wrongness. Um, but... Um, <laughs> What games are you most excited at the moment of getting back, wrestling from the shelf of wonder and excitement and joy and putting them on the table and filming them? Not the new stuff, but the older stuff that you have. That we've already played? Because we have quite yes. a bit of games that we... Oh, yes. yeah. So Feast for Odin, That's that's been constantly in my top five, you know, ever since the first time I played it. And that's really a game that, that I had no business liking, but... Oh my goodness! Uh, we 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 got the expansion to it, and it just made it better. And that's yeah. one of those games that we would like to play. But um, the answer to your question is actually a, a wide variety of games. We were just looking at the collection today, mm-hmm. and even um, Quadropolis. That was a title that had come out a few years ago. Yeah, that people. It was more of like a like a. Hmm. For you know, for people who ha- aren't quite in the hobby, this is something that they could play. But it's got quite a bit of a strategy to it. So that's one Goa. Goa was a, was one of those dry games that I actually bought for Naveen, my husband as a gift. Yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, um, that's another one. Um, we have uh, Caverna and Agricola, and we need to figure out which one we want to keep. Um, <laughs> we haven't played Agricola at all, so I know we have Fields of Aural that's sitting there, kind of unplayed, um, quite a bit actually. Yeah. We're in the middle of a... Actually, we have a, a Pandemic Legacy Season 2 game that we've been playing since it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how long... It. Was that a year ago? Was that a year and a half? Two years ago? Wow. <laughs> Something like that? We have no idea what's Let's going on hang, in the story anymore. Hang your shelf in... Hang, I was going to say hang your shelf in shame. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> There's the name of your show. We're going to stop you from hanging your shelf in shame. <laughs> It's, there you go. You can, it's a forward by Sean Connery. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've i still got the others by Simon that I haven't played, and I've had that for years, and I, I keep bringing oh. it down. Yeah. It's kind of like my... I think my, you have to just kind of schedule it, right? It's, I you almost know, need to... It's like a big read, and there's a lot of stuff, and there's not that many kind of playthrough Mm. There's not that many kind of playthrough videos that are kind of of a decent... It was unfortunate because I think it was a game that got a lot of hype. And Mm. then it came out. And this was one of the ones which people just, you know... They're now selling it on kind of like secondhand on Facebook groups. And they're saying, okay, the others with all the stretch goals and, you know, some Mm. meringue pie that I had sitting around the house, $30 (laughs) kind of thing. And people are still going, Mm. I don't... I'm not... You know, they're asking more questions about the meringue pie than they are asking about <laughs> the actual game kind of thing, which is always like, well, right. I've got that, which I'd love to get. Um, I got, the, I would love to get, kind of get that, get that to the table, mm-hmm. kind of myself. Um, yeah, we have a like Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if you ever oh, played yeah. the consulting detective. We had yes. that game for years. I don't even know if we've unshrinked it, or I think it might still be in shrink, <laughs> but it, it's quite a lot of reading, is what we were told. So we hadn't yes. uh, opened it. But we will one day. <laughs> I think you need to be in the right mindset for that game because it's one of these things where the game is just nasty to you because you kind of like, from oh, what I've right? heard, from what, well, well, from what, no, condescending, I think the thing is. I think what happens is like you kind of go, oh. you kind of say, well, I managed to kind of, I, I carried out 15 tasks to kind of find out, you know, how the crime kind of happened. And then you kind of uh, open, you reference what Sherlock Holmes does, and he went, I found it in three. And it's like, this is what I did. And you're just like going, all right, thanks. Uh, you know, an avocado. Oh. I hate it. Well, bring kind it on, thing. Sherlock, I think. 
I'd like to see. Bring it I'd like on. To see, I'd like to see. I'd like to see that. You could have taken, could have, could have taken them on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about? I mean, you mentioned the Instagram. Are you going back into Instagram again? Are you going to be? Is there going to going to be more? kind of content yeah kind of... so we we have an instagram now that we've been posting like um micro written reviews so here's yeah. the deal we 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 started the instagram again this mm-hmm. year before we started the youtube channel and we were doing like uh three or four uh board game reviews a week on yeah. instagram and we would take all these pictures and it was a whole thing and then we started doing the youtube channel and we were like what well, wait hold on there's not that much time <laughs> in our lives to do both so we still kind of do the Instagram. It's just not what it used to be. But we're uh-huh. we're kind of preparing to revamp everything again come January. Now that we're home, you know, for an extended period of time, because um, that's been quite a big part of it. Do you feel? Um, are you going to continue? Is is one of the is the kind of the nature of your character? Is it to kind of change things and ramp things up a bit? Are you the type of person that are able to sit there and just say, well, let's see how it goes? Or are you kind of like, let's try new things, let's do this, let's do that, and see what kind of impact it can have? Um, a little bit of both. Mm. Like, I think I would still like to continue the same kind of content we were making. Yeah. Um, just kind of timed properly so that we're a little bit more consistent. Mm-hmm. And then we, I also tried to do, I'll try, I'll like think of new you know, ideas along the way to, to feature on Instagram. So we did a, we do like short tutorial series sometimes on Instagram as well. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll try new things, but Instagram is kind of tough. It's, it's not as receptive, I would say, or it's not as organic as other platforms now is what I've been told um, because of the way that their algorithm works. Yeah. So yeah. some days I care a lot about it and some days I don't really care as much. <laughs> I've made a lot of friends on Instagram, which is kind of what I care about the most. Yeah, I put kind of pictures up and then I kind of like folk, a lot of folk like it. And I'm just like saying, this is great. But what does it mean? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This is fun. Thank you for liking this. And it's like, I've still got to, I've still got to capture doing a story. Because I get like, you get people that they do stories. And I'm just like, how are you, what kind of witchcraft is this? (laughs) What are you... What are you doing? So I need somebody yeah. out there, like some kind of Instagram guru to come in and say, right, it's quite simple. You take a video, you go into the tools, <laughs> you add your extra stuff, and you're all you're all kind of fine. Um, are yeah, you going to be going in? quite a bit of tinkering. It does. There's some tinkering involved there. It does. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I'm, I probably like yourself, I'm probably like kind of like, some days I'll kind of like uber obsess over it and kind of go in and say, mm-hmm. okay, can I do this? And other times I'm just like going, oh, I forgot to post these pictures on Instagram that I thought <laughs> I said I was going to kind of do it. And it's the same with, you know, um, all the other channels. I think um, there's a there's almost a temptation or almost a pressure sometimes to, if you're a content creator, then it's like, well, you need to be putting everything that you do out across as many channels as possible. Mm-hmm. And I right, think you... Right. I think you naturally end up flowing towards spending more time and care on and attention on one. And I think that's Absolutely. just gonna, that's And the thing natural. about Instagram is it's it really they really want you to be actively engaged on their platform. So oh, yeah. they you yeah, so if you don't if you're not actively commenting on other people's pages or um you're just not you just kinda post the picture and kinda just leave it, they they won't push your content out to people as much. Yeah, that's kind of how their algorithm works these days. So it's it's very time consuming. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's kind of almost built for people um, um, a lot younger than me. And me, who would probably who would probably like go being going, Dad, can you help me with my car? <laughs> um, you know, and me going because they'd be like constantly kind of taking kind of selfies, and you see, you know, you see, you literally see these people that that is all they're doing. They're right. constantly taking selfies and they're commenting on other people's selfies. And yes, I'm just like going, exactly. but what's happening to your soul? <laughs> you know, that's the question. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> Where did it go? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> um, are you going to be going to more cons mm-hmm, um, yeah. next year then? Have you got a big itinerary now of what you're going to be able to do? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think the Pax Unplugged was kind of like our starting one.、Mm. And then we're definitely going to try to go to Origins. We're kind of on the fence about Gen、mm. Con just because of kind of what people tell us. And because it's a very, very expensive weekend. So we're, we're trying to figure out what makes the most financial sense. Um, in terms、mm. of time off as well, but definitely Origins and、mm. probably Pax Unplugged again.、Um, yeah. My husband's trying to convince me to go to Essen again next year, but、uh, we will see. Go to, go to, go to Aircon. <laughs> go to、What? Aircon in March. It's in, it's in a place called Harrogate, which is kind of、oh. like a lovely kind of English town. City thing, and you know, it's a lovely place, and you can come and play lots of games. And、uh, I think, uh, I think uh, there's going to be, I think, Aircon, they had Rodney Smith last year,、oh, uh, nice. this year, and next year, I think,、um, I think Paula's going to be there, and Matthew Jude's going to be there from This Game is Broken.、Oh, and I、awesome. also think Suzanne, I think Suzanne. Sheldon's going to be there as well.、Mm, um, and, cool. I'm th- and I'm thinking of going too. But I don't think that's going to be, I, you know, and that's, I'm still going to have words with Mark about why I haven't appeared on any of Aircon's literature <laughs> to say that I'm going to be there. But there you go.、Um, you know, <laughs> Sounds beautiful. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's really friendly. And it's not like kind of overwhelming. And I really, really kind of, I really, really enjoyed it. I met some fantastic people kind of、uh, earlier this year. So、oh, I'm、fantastic. definitely kind of tempted to, to kind of go back again.、Um, yeah, definitely. It, if, um, If people have listened along tonight and they've went, I need to check out the content, <laughs> where, do, where do you exist on the internet webs? How can we find you on the internet webs?、Um, so we're at youtube.com slash before you play. Okay.、Uh, we're also on Instagram. So same handle. It's at instagram.com slash before you play. And you can find me on Twitter. Naveen doesn't,、uh, doesn't do too much social media, which、mm-hmm. is great. But,、uh, but I'm on Twitter and it's before you play underscore because somebody took with the one without the underscore. And I、no、bet you they've not、that. tweeted. I bet you they've never ever used it as well. Yeah, probably not. The worst people <laughs> in the world. Strange world. Yeah, yeah. No, what I'll do is、um, I will make sure that we,、um, we put all the links in the show notes so that we've got notes to show、um, so everybody can see、oh. and, and find and follow and check out the content for goodness sake, you lovely people. You know,、Wonderful. I like you. Thank you. You know, I all like you out there. But, you know, on occasion, just do what I say.、Um, if you want to keep an eye on what we're up to, then please go to the internet webs and search for We're Not Wizards. And you'll find us in all the different、um, worn out places and worn out faces and、um, all that jazz, as they would say, like your Instagrams and your Twitters and your Facebooks and our blog. <laughs> and you can find us on all the podcast catchers of choice. We've got YouTube as well, but don't check out the YouTube.、Um, otherwise, you know, it's kind of like watching a compilation of the death scenes from Saw.、Um, <laughs> And, but, you know, if you do like what you've listened to tonight, go to Apple Podcasts and、uh, give us a subscription and give us a rating or a review. If you are going to be giving us a rating or a review, don't give us 10 stars because、um, the ego has landed. And, or don't give us one star because it does make me cry. And look, at the time of recording, it's a week until my birthday, and you don't want to be making me cry. That's what I'm saying.、Mm. That's all I'm begging. Give us something in the middle, like a five. Because it's average. <laughs> and, you know, we're just a little bit average.、Um, but the person who's not been average tonight, they're rather wonderful, rather fantastic from before you play. It's Monique. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much for coming on.、Um, oh, thank you for is, having me. There's only two more things to do. The first thing is to remember that we're many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards? <laughs> we're not. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> and, and, and the second thing is to say goodbye. So it's、uh, a、so、goodbye from Monique. Say goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much. And it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Make something awful. And、um, before you do anything, before you get off your chair, before you go to make a cup of tea, before you get out of your car, At work, 
just before you do anything, just make sure you check out before you play. But until the next time, goodbye. A wizard is never late. Is he early? He arrives precisely when he means to.